You've been watching film on these teams all year. So what stands out about the Ravens and the 49ers? I think the one thing that immediately stands out about the Ravens is the way they throw the ball. It's different than most teams in the NFL. They throw the ball down the field. Very rare in today's NFL. The 49ers have become a different team in the NFL offensively because of the many dimensions that Colin Kaepernick brings, both throwing the ball with a big-time arm and the ability to run the ball, which changes the way defenses have to play the 49ers. What would you say are the biggest strengths and weaknesses for each team? The strength of the 49ers to me is the multiplicity of their offense. I think that they do more things in the run game, and now with Kaepernick even more, more things in the run game than almost any team in the NFL, and that is very, very difficult to defend because defenses are not used to facing that. The strength of the Ravens to me is their ability to strike with big plays in the passing game any time at any point in the game. Flacco has the strongest intermediate to deep arm in the league, and I think they're willing to attack deep. They never go into a game thinking, we're not going to do that. They go into a game saying, we're going to do it. We don't care about the strength of your defense. The 49ers, to me, are, are a very complete team. I don't think they have weaknesses in a strict sense, but I do think when they line up with five defensive backs, that they can be attacked on the outside, that they're two outside corners in their nickel package, Chris Culliver and Terrell Brown. They're good players, but I think offenses will look at that and say, we can go after those two guys and we can win. The Ravens, I think, and this has surprised me through the playoffs, Ray Lewis has played every snap in three playoff games, which is really remarkable given his age and the fact that he missed a lot of time this year. He and Danelle Ellerby are the two linebackers who basically stay on the field on every snap. I think that offenses can attack those guys in the passing game and I really have been surprised watching tape that teams have not done that as much as I thought they would and I think the 49ers can do that because they have Vernon Davis and Delaney Walker two really good receiving tight ends. What fact or trend about each team do you think would surprise their fans? Everybody talks about the 49ers run game with Colin Kaepernick in the pistol and they run all these plays, read option concepts. Most teams run those with just one back in the backfield. The 49ers very often run those plays with two backs in the backfield, and it is much harder to defend when there's two backs in the backfield because you have an extra blocker on offense, and that requires the defense to have an extra defender, which usually means a safety. And it's very hard for defenses because of the passing element with that pistol as well, it's very hard for a defense to commit an extra safety because then they can get burned in the passing game. And, and how about the Ravens? The Ravens have had their most success in the playoffs when they've taken their fullback, Avante Leach, off the field. Now, most people think of the Ravens running game as a two-back running game because Avante Leach has arguably been the best blocking fullback in the NFL over the last number of years but they've had their most success when they've taken him off the field, lined up with three wide receivers, just had the single back, Ray Rice, in the backfield. They've run the ball better, and they clearly have thrown it better with three wide receivers on the field. Now, with everything you know about both teams, how do you see this one playing out? I think the wild card in this game is Colin Kaepernick. He's played exceptionally well, but he's still only in his 10th NFL start in Super Bowl forty-seven. I thought he threw the ball really, really well in the NFC Championship game against Atlanta. And ultimately, what makes a quarterback a high-level player in the NFL is the way they throw it, not the way they run it. They didn't call very many runs for him, to the surprise of many, in the NFC Championship game. I think how he throws the ball will be the single most deciding factor in Super Bowl Forty-Seven. Prognostication time. Who will win and why? Well, call me crazy, and I've been called worse. I think that the Ravens are going to win in a really hard-fought game, and I'll even pick a score. I think they're going to win 27 to 24. All right. You give us a little bit more. I can. I like the Ravens because of Joe Flacco's ability to make big plays in the passing game on the perimeter. 
My guess is Joe Flacco won't have great numbers in terms of completion percentage. I could see Joe Flacco in this game going 12 for 27, but for 250 yards and three touchdowns. And I think that that would be enough to win the game for the Ravens. I've got a fact for you. In the past nine Super Bowls, just two running backs have cracked the 100-yard rushing mark, and both of those came in the same game with Dominic Rhodes and Thomas Jones in the Colts-Bears matchup, which was played on a rainy night that didn't lend itself to a dazzling passing game. So should we expect more of the same, or do you think there'll be a break in the trend? I think the 49ers would have the best shot to have a 100-yard rusher because I think their offense is clearly based on running the football, even with Colin Kaepernick. So I think Frank Gore would have the best chance of gaining 100 yards rushing in this game. I don't believe that Ray Rice will because I think the 49ers' run defense is very good. And while I think the Ravens will try to run the ball, my guess is Rice will end up more with 20 rushes for 70 yards, that kind of number but I believe Frank Gore has a much better chance of breaking that trend. Just seven Super Bowls have had a defensive player win MVP, and Ray Lewis was actually one of them. So who do you think is the best bet on defense for each team to emerge as MVP this year? I think for the Ravens on defense, the player I would pick to have the best shot to be an MVP would be Ed Reed. My reason is this. Kaepernick is still a young quarterback. He's a, what we call a primary read quarterback. Very often he just looks at the one receiver. If he's open, he throws it and he can make unbelievable throws. But I think if you take that away, I don't think he's quite there yet. It's only his 10th NFL start. And Ed Reed is a master at reading quarterbacks, understanding where they're going to throw the football. And I think you could see Ed Reed come up with a pick or two in this game. All right, you brought up Kaepernick, so let's talk about quarterbacks. Now, it's the first time for both QBs, but do you think that Joe Flacco's experience might give him the edge? Joe Flacco is, is the definition. You look in the dictionary, unflappable, and his picture's there. He's just <laughs> that kind of guy. I don't think the moment will impact Joe Flacco at all. He just plays, and he's extremely talented throwing the ball. Kaepernick has been very good clearly composed poised he hasn't really played like a a second year inexperienced quarterback i think though that kaepernick is the kind of quarterback that if you can get some pressure on him you'll make him move around now he can make a lot of plays moving around but i think defenses always prefer to have a quarterback play outside of structure as opposed to playing within structure so i flacco's experience and just the way he is as a player I would view that as a real positive. For the 49ers, that's easy. I think Ahmad Brooks, who plays opposite Alden Smith, who of course had 19 and a half sacks, I think Ahmad Brooks is a great, great player and no one talks about him. For the Ravens, Corey Graham, their corner, who plays outside in their base defense and then comes inside over the slot when they go to their nickel defense, I think Corey Graham has been an integral part of the major improvement that the Ravens defense has made over the last half of the season through the playoffs. And final question, do you think this is the year we will finally see overtime in the Super Bowl? God, how do you answer that? Um, Best guess. I don't think we'll see overtime in the Super Bowl. No, I don't. So I don't think it'll be the year.